Hello! Welcome to our first grade religious education recording. A big hi to Connor, Mark, Nyla, and Robert. I'm Mrs. Kogan. I'm your first grade teacher. I emailed your parents and this is the recording that's going to be every Sunday at 10 o'clock. You can go into it any time during the week. I'm not going to have you do any writing or coloring during this time period. You'll do that at home with your parents. I'm just going through our session of what I want you to do, what I want you to remember, and there's going to be five points every week. Every week, we're going to have a decade of the rosary from your three-ring binder. It goes through the life of Mary. It goes through the life of Jesus. Number two, we're going to have our weekly. So have your weekly ready for October 11th. The other three you can do with your folks at home. But we're starting now with October 11th. The third item we're going to cover every week are objects in church that you're going to see in church. I want you to know the names of everything. So we'll go through that week by week. We'll keep adding to our names of what I want you to know and what I'm going to be able to identify with the correct name. Fourth, we're going to have a saint for the week. And fifth, we're going to have a reading from the Old Testament and the New Testament. Because at Mass, the first reading that we listen to, we're sitting down. That's the first reading from an old, the Old Testament. There's a psalm. There's a second reading from St. Paul. But then when we stand up, that's when the priest is going to read from the New Testament, the life of Christ. And we're standing at that point. So let us begin. I want you to open up to your three-ring binder. Do the beginning with your folks, the, the rosary. We'll make a rosary before the end of the year, boys and girls, for each one of you. But right now, I want you to be familiar with each mystery of the rosary, each uh, decade of the rosary. Because as we say of our Father and Hail Marys, we're meditating on events in the life of Mary and Jesus. This is the very first one. It says the first joyful mystery, Mary becomes God's mother. So we're going to go down. And you're going to read along. Oh, look at the little pet. There's always a little pet in one of, usually there's a pet in one of these little pictures. Okay, now let me see if I can read it with you. Ah, I have to read it this way. The angel gave, read it along. The angel Gabriel tells Mary that God has chosen her to be the mother of his son. Mary says, yes, I will. Mary, help me to do what God wants. All right. Help me to do what God wants. We can call upon our Heavenly Mother at any time to help us. I'm going to show you a big picture that we have in our first grade classroom. So if we're able to go back during the year, all the 20 decades of the rosary will be in the front of the classroom. And you'll be able to look at this scene. It's called the Annunciation because it's announced. Oh, this is the Joyful Mystery. Let's see what it says down here. It says the Annunciation, Mary becomes God's mother. So when you look at this picture, I want you to be able to identify our Blessed Mother, Mary. I want you to know the angel's name, Angel Gabriel. He's an archangel. We all have a special guardian angel, but archangels have a special mission for God, and they're messengers. Angel, angel Gabriel is a messenger. He sent to Mary, she was a young woman, about 2,000 years ago, to ask her if she would be the mother of God. And she said yes. The angel Gabriel also told Mary that the baby's name will be Jesus. That's how she knew exactly what to name the child of God, Jesus. All right. So in your blue binder... I want you to color those pictures nicely, boys and girls. So at the end of um, at the end of first grade, you'll have the twenty decades of the rosary 
and you'll know the events in the life, the important events of Mary and Jesus. So in your blue binder, I also want you to keep your weekly, your weeklies. This is for October 11th. So we're just going to look at this together. There's four images on the front. So I want you to go over these with your mom or your dad or your older sibling. Maybe you even will look at it carefully yourself. But there's four events. Each one of you have been baptized into the Roman Catholic Church when you were probably a baby. Here at Mass, this is during the offertory. These two boys are bringing up the bread, the host, and the wine. They're not consecrated yet. That'll take place during Mass. Here's after the consecration, when the host and the wine becomes the body and blood of Christ. This is the Our Father. And here, now notice what's going on in this picture. The priest is blessing this young girl. But notice the way she has her hands folded. This means she has not received Holy Communion yet. But she's going up. She definitely put your hands here. And the priest will know that you have not received your First Holy Communion. But you're coming up for a special blessing. Now, during Mass, we talk about a celebration, a celebration of the meal. Because we're, those of us who have made our First Communion, we're receiving the body and blood of Christ every week. Inside, it tells, shows a celebration that we might be having with special food, special friends. On the back, if you open it up, after discussing the four, the four events in this picture, here's his four, four um, situations here. Each one is going to go with one of the events. You can cut this out, boys and girls. Feel free to cut your, cut out your weeklies. God says, come to my house. God's house is the church. God's house is the church. I want you to go in to your handbook. Have your handbook also. Your promised handbook. Have that also in your three-ring binder. That'll keep everything together. I want you to go to page 16. It talks about our church family. So read this at home with your family. I want you to be able to identify every picture. This is a chalice. This is where the blood, the wine, that changes into Jesus' blood. This is the host, the Eucharistic host. It usually has a cross on it. And the word mass down below. I want you to color that very, very carefully. The mass is our highest form of prayer. There's nothing we can do more important than attending mass. Right now, this is the third portion. I want to show you this image of the church because, as first graders, it's very, very important that you be able to name every image, every item that you see in church to be able to say its proper name. This is the most important part of any Catholic church, is the tabernacle. This is where the body, this is where the Eucharistic hosts are held. There's always a, there's always a Eucharistic host in the tabernacle, Jesus. So Jesus is always in the tabernacle. And leftover hosts are there too, boys and girls, to use at other masses. They've already been consecrated when they're in the, in the tabernacle. Look, when you're in any church, especially St. Joseph's, now you're going to look for what's called a sanctuary lamp. This lamp is in the sanctuary where the altar is. It has a red, it's usually always a red glass outside of the candle, the candle's inside. Glowing means Jesus is in the tabernacle. When we come into church, we bless ourselves with holy water when the when the pandemic is over, there will be holy water. We make the sign of the cross. It's very important for us to know the correct way to make the sign of the cross. And you'll work at home with your family. We go into church. <clears throat> we go up to the pew where we're going to sit. And we genuflect on our right knee. 
I genuflect your right knee touches the floor. Your eyes are on the tabernacle. Because you're saying, hi, I'm Mark. Hi, I'm Connor. Hi, I'm Nyla. Hi, I'm Robert. God knows your name. But you're saying hi to God. Go into the pew and say prayers, please. And go say little prayers to Jesus. Tell Jesus you love him. Tell our Blessed Mother you love her. Look around for the statue of St. Joseph, because our parish is called St. Joseph. You'll see St. Joseph holding Jesus, and tell St. Joseph you love him. They're called the Holy Family, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Ask God to bless your family. Make your family just like the Holy Family. So, we have a crucifix. Always look for the crucifix. We have the body of Christ on the crucifix. We, Jesus died for each one of us. We have an altar. Usually the altar is a separate table. In this image, this is the altar right here. It's like a table where Mass is celebrated. Candles. We'll always have lit candles during Mass low on the altar. And where we sit, we're not called a bench, chair. It's called a pew. If you're in church where they have this type of pew, it's called a pew. So those are the words I want you to know. Tabernacle, sanctuary lamp, crucifix, candles, altar, and pews. Each week we're going to have a special saint. Every week a special saint. And this is the picture now when we're back in our classrooms. This is the picture I'll have up, and we'll have it in chronological order as we've had them. Our first saint is going to be St. Francis of Assisi. Because last Sunday, when I met most of you, October 4th, that was the feast day of St. Francis of Assisi. And many of you brought your pets. It was fun. Fun meeting all your pets. St. Francis lived about 800 years ago. He's from Assisi. Italy. That's why we say St. Francis of Assisi. That's the town where he lived. His feast day is October 4th, meaning that was when St. Francis died. Usually the feast day is on the date or near the date that the saint died. Notice what we have in the picture. Look at those birds. Look how St. Francis has his hands elevated. Now we had special projects that we were given last week. We were given three special, we were given three special uh, activities in our goodie bag. This one says, the object of these three activities is not just to honor St. Francis, who called the sun brother, he loved creation, he called the moon sister, but also to help us remember that God made the world for us and he is counting on us to be good stewards of creation. One of our activity that was one activity that was in the bag was four ways we can care for the earth. So I filled these in today. Look at the different illustrations. Here's an illustration from St. Francis. No matter how the artist drew St. Francis, you should be able to identify him. He's always going to have a Franciscan robe on, a brown robe. He usually has animals around him. The earth is God's gift. Take care of it. So you have this at home if you're still in your packet. On the back, it tells you the life of St. Francis. That's good to read with your family. A prayer, St. Francis. Ask God to fill me with love and joy. So make up your own prayers, boys and girls. And there'll be lots of little prayers like this. St. Francis, now you're praying to St. Francis. And you're saying, ask God to fill me with love and joy. Because the saints are in heaven, and they can intercede to God for us. Now, we had to draw, we had to write four ways that we respect our natural world. So I wrote, let me see what I put here. Love the beauty of nature. Just love a beautiful day, a snowy day, a rainy day, the clouds, the sky, the sun. 
be able to name trees and flowers. It's very important. God made so many trees and so many flowers. It's good for us to know the names of them. I would love to know more names of trees than I do know. And flowers, I would love to be able to rattle off names of flowers. I know many of them, but we can all, there's always more and more and more for us to learn. Talk about the difference between garbage and recycling. Garbage we throw away. Recycling are objects with pa uh, paper, cardboard, plastic, glass that can be recycled, can be used again. Care for your pets, boys and girls. If, if care for a plant. Have an indoor plant this weekend. I mean, this, this winter. That's what I mean. This winter, have an indoor plant that you have to care for. You water. You see it growing. The roots are many times under the soil, so you don't see the roots as much, but you see the fruit in the leaves that they're doing well. I want to show you something that I'm going to do. I have a plant here, and you know, I don't really know its proper name. Maybe it's called a pothos. I'm going to take four of these stems for each of you, one for each of you, and I'm going to cut it, and I'm going to put them in water. And all year now, I'll have them here, or if they're back in class, I'll bring them back into class. And you're going to see the roots form. You're going to see many roots down at the bottom. I'll have a clear clear vase for you. And then you'll see your, your leaves developing. More and more leaves will form. And I want you to feel that that's how you're growing internally in first grade. Your roots are all... <coughs> The, um, the knowledge, but it's the love in your heart and how you're growing in love for God. And then the leaves, they're going to be a result of what's inside you, boys and girls. Kindness to your family, immediate obedience when your mom and dad calls you and even your siblings calls you. You come immediately. You go immediately. Um, what am I trying to say now? Um, St. Francis. Okay, okay. I, I, I just had a little loss of memory there for a second. Uh, the third one, the project, it was a, um, a bird feeder. So I made my bird feeder today. Here it is. Here's my bird feeder. I didn't have a short roll, so I used a paper towel roll. Put my arms in. This is St. Francis. I have St. Francis on the front. Then I thought, oh my golly, what if the wind blows my... And so I put St. Francis on the back. Now you can put the back of St. Francis on if you want to, as long as you have two fronts of St. Francis. I have my string in order to hang it. I have my seeds. I put all the peanut butter on and the seeds just clung to it beautifully. So this I'm going to take outside tomorrow. So that is our third project that we were given over the weekend, last weekend, for St. Francis's Feast Day. The very last <clears throat> item we're going to cover every week, boys and girls, is a reading from the Old Testament and one from the New Testament. The Old Testament, every Mass we attend, we there's a reading of the Old Testament. Then we stand for the New Testament. Oh, th th I did still have a third. That was I showed you two projects. This is a third project that we were given last week. It's called a creation mobile. Now, a mobile is anything that moves, anything you can create. So you could have put your images any way you want, and any any uh, clothes hanger, but have them dangling in some way that they can move. Now, I started here with day. I put mine in a row. I have day number one. God created day and night. Day number two. God created the sky, the heavens. Day number three. God created water. And God created land. This is the creation of the world. Day number four, God created the moon. 
and he created the stars. Day number five, he created the fish and he created birds. Day number six, he created the animals and he created a man and a woman. He created Adam and then, oh yeah, here we go, and Eve. On the seventh day, God rested. So on the seventh day, we call Sunday, another S word we use is the Sabbath. The Sabbath is a very, very special day, boys and girls. It's a day <clears throat> we go to church. It's a day to visit with, be good and kind to your family members in a special way today, be able to spend more time with them. Many times you may go over to relatives, you may go over to your grandparents' homes, they may come over to yours. Um, you're not doing any work to anything that's considered really servile work. Any work like going out and um, you know, if you're going to vacuum for your parents, you're going to do wash for them. Try to do that during the week, Monday through Monday through Saturday. We try to also not go shopping on Sunday. We try to make it a very very special day. There's exceptions to this, but we're going to try. And this is called God's. The Creation Mobile. That was our third project. And I'm going to put this on a special place in our home. I live with my daughter and son-in-law and four grandchildren. And we're going to have a special spot. We have a spot in the hallway. It's like a bulletin board. And we're going to put up objects that we have all worked on in first grade. And not in first grade. They're in third. They're fifth, sixth, and seventh grade. So I'm going to put our first grade projects on that board, too. And they'll be able to put their project. So you might want a special spot. Sometimes on the refrigerator, sometimes around the home. So that's going to be, I have a child's first Bible here. You can use any Bible, boys and girls. And, you know, your parents can get out their Bibles and, and go to Genesis. Is what I just talked about, God creating the world, is the very, very first story in Genesis. The Old Testament takes about, about three-fourths of the Bible. And then the New Testament, that begins, look what it begins with. A picture, this is another illustration, a picture of, uh, let me see, a picture of Mary, the angel Gabriel, asking Mary if she'll be the mother of God. So this is the New Testament, boys and girls. A reading from the Gospels of either Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. So you'll go over these readings at home. Sometimes I'll read them to you. Today, this is much like what we had with our The Mystery of the Rosary. Okay, so that's it. That's it for the week. I don't know how long this was. We're trying to make it. Uh, didn't I meant to time it, but I didn't. <clears throat> but it should be about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. We never want to go over a half an hour. So I, I hope that this didn't go over a half an hour. All right, for our closing prayer, we're going to pray the Our Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, back to the right arm, amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forget, forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Dear Lord, help me to have a good week. Help me to obey my parents. Help me to pray my morning prayers, night prayers. Hopefully you all pray, pray before meals. If not, you can encourage your family to start praying before meals. And thanking God for the cook, thanking God for the food, and thanking God for how good and wonderful and generous he is to us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. All right. Bye-bye. See you next week. Bye-bye.